Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief! We're playing every mission of the mainline Halo, Halo video games in chronological order, discussing our experiences and milking the teats of lore along the way. Um, if you'd like to play along ew, and have your thoughts like read that. on the show, email like us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, visit Evolved on Patreon. For everything Evolved has to offer, visit EvolvedHalo.com. This episode, we're debriefing the Pelican Down mission from Halo Infinite. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. Imagine Eshram, but with a Mickey Mouse voice. <laughs> it would be way scarier, I think. I wish I could tell you it was difficult, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> There is a uh, like a Mickey Mouse like, emulator thing online. You should go check that out and put in some of his dialogue. It's very good. I mean, I, I'm sure you could mod um, <laughs> mod it to do that pretty easily. Uh, not as quite as impactful, but also hilarious. Last mission was the Spire. The Harbinger escaped uh, escaped, and a phallic spire emerged from the depths of the ring nearby. Chief and the weapon plan to penetrate the freshly erected Forerunner structure, but are met with banished resistance at its base. Once inside, their euphoria is interrupted by a curious orb named Adjutant Resolution. The installation submonitor leads them towards the Reformation controls, but then tries to kill them after he learns they're not going to finish the job. Now, in Pelican Down, our heroic trio is reunited after a nifty escape from the Spire, but their pelican is quickly shot down in transit to the command spire. Chief must destroy a series of banished AA guns in order to continue the mission and stop the reformation. Is it a reformation or reformation? Reformation. The reformation, reformation has begun. Reformation. Day of the game is May 28th, 2560. I need to start here because apparently we have a mauler mangler problem <laughs> <laughs> i've i've been well, i've some seen of, the some complaints but i haven't said anything because i thought it would be funny if we continued to call it the mauler <laughs> we've got a little bit of an issue from our and our listeners have spoken <laughs> they're so close why would they name these guns so close together come on i mean come on i, I was just, naming I was just calling it that to make them mad at this point it's like sauron and saruman like come on just name them a little bit more different. <laughs> so, which one is in this game? Is it the Mangler? It's the Mangler. <laughs> it's yeah. the Mangler. Okay. The Mauler's from Halo Two. And, and that's three. like the sh the that's mini three. shotgun thing, right? Yeah, correct. Okay, the Mangler. We apologize, to listeners. If we say Mauler, <laughs> we mean Mangler. <laughs> Perfect. It's honest it's mistake. It was. It's been funny to troll them. It's been good. <laughs> oh, so you've been doing it on purpose now? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I saw I saw the complaints like months ago, but I haven't changed it or brought it up. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. All right, David. Why don't you take us through this cutscene? So I, so I um kind of I guess I cut you off of the cutscene last time because like from the the like the, the mission prompts and everything. Like as soon as you, we kill Adjutant Resolution. And there's, there's a little tiny bit of dialogue. Then that's when it says mission complete. And then Pelican down starts. So let's start from the jump. Yeah, this is this is pretty cool, obviously. So Chief jumps off the spire after taking an LED network. You get some, you get an awesome little cutscene here of just like Chief kind of free diving. And like the Pelican's coming. The Halo music playing. It's beautiful. The Pelican kind of comes down, opens up its kind of bay. All the shit flies out, which is so stupid. We do not have that shit tied, <laughs> tied down. But anyway, so there goes all your guns, all your food, just flying out of the pelican. Um, it just kind of levels off, and in the background, through the doors, you can see, like, the spire crashing down. And it's pretty cool. Does it crash? There's, like, an explosion, but does it... Like, I was curious what that does. It looks like does. it just sits back into the ground, like, yeah. aggressively. I don't know. It doesn't blow up, I don't think. Because um, you can go back to it, right? You can go back to it, exactly. Yeah. It's, just, it's there still. Um, then the weapon kind of talks to you about like what's going on. And she's like, you know, this is the command spire. This is a specific one. You have the pilot freaking out again. Uh, there's a good interaction between uh, the weapon here. Like He's like, is everything trying to kill you? And she's like, it seems like it is. It's like, oh, wait, you're being sarcastic. <laughs> I like it. He's like, he's fun. I like him. It's good bonding. Mm -hmm. And then you have Moni Pilot being Moni, Moni Pilot moment. Um, and... 
we've kind of seen this. I think this this was showcased. Um, this sequence right here with um the ship getting shot down by AA guns, the pilot freaking out. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think this is cool, except for the fact that like the pelican gets shot directly twice, like yes. directly, and it's fine. Uh, he crashes it into the ground. It is smashed to fuck up. Um, the screen goes black and it wakes up with the pilot kind of being all groggy and stuff. Uh, Chief is behind him. He's fine. Uh, like all crashes, Chief's totally fine. And then you have the pilot freaking out at Chief, kind of giving out. I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be gone. He's really sad that his pelican got shot down. Uh, it kind of really. I, I kind of liked this bit. I liked that it. Okay, we're kind of building up of him being a whiny moany person. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of overflows here and he actually confronts Chief and shouts at him and stuff. And now, this is cool because we've never seen anyone do this. So, like, mm-hmm. I wish they kind of doubled down on this a little bit, but it was good. And Chief was just not interested at all, which is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> He's just like, no, nah, whatever, walk off, we're doing this way here. He's like, I, I saw Condors, let me go get him. And, and Chief's like, no. And I was like, just let the dude, and I don't know why this dude is asking for Chief's permission either. I thought, like, yeah, just do it. Because of the reveal that happens later, I'm like, when you just fucking do it, you're not, like, part mm-hmm. of this, you can just leave. Um. So, anyway, uh, he, you just kind of leave the pilot. Um, behind and you go out into the world um, and it's kind of frustrating because there's no mention of fixing this pelican it's like we're going to get a condor and get a slip plate drive and get out of here which makes mm-hmm. sense it's fine uh, and then I'll talk a little bit later on when this mission ends that how much I don't like that the pelican just takes off and that's it <laughs> <laughs> well you can see it because you essentially get out of it and you can look yeah. at the pelican and it's it's doing fine there's not smoking or anything yeah. it's even it's though it was shot shape. twice and it crashed <laughs> Right. Like a pelican does, it's just totally fine. Yeah. This is the 2020 demo. Yeah. That's what, all That's what it was. Come to love. And there's actually a, there's an Easter egg in here somewhere. Um, I think I do have it in the notes. So there's there's an an homage to that. To the actual demo? Well, yeah, there's a little Craig thing. Oh, a Craig thing. Sorry. For yeah. There was a, a little, little bit of a Craig thing. What's the Craig thing in here? I don't see it in here. Either. It's um, over on the so the we- I'm gonna start on the east, but it's on the west gun. There um, is like that big elevator that you go up, and before you go up, there is kind of some structures that are like half buried in the ground to the right. I know so them. If you, yeah, you go down in one of those structures. There is a um, inside of it on the wall is a picture of the Craig face. Oh, cool! I never yeah. noticed that. That's cool. You you go hunter down the origins mm-hmm. ground zero absolutely yeah. um so i will start here and i, I want to talk so to this is a cool area to explore they've given us this nice little playground again it, it was it made sense you know now in retrospect for the demo to be here because like the story is pretty contained here you can't fast travel anywhere so now that you are have been shot down we've lost that ability so now if you wanted to go back and get some spartan cores or go back to the other um open world areas you can't you have to do this stuff here um and you do have a number of tasks that we as we have in the other open world areas so this is considered or we're considering it the the third open world area and there is uh, one mjolnir armory there are three banished audio logs which we'll cover briefly there are five UNSC audio logs, which we'll cover briefly, and there are five Spartan cores, which we may or may not point out during this walkthrough. Um, so additional stuff to power up your newly... Now, well, last mission, well, let's see, a couple missions ago, we got our final upgrade. So now we're, we have everything that we have um, throughout the rest of the game from an equipment standpoint. So now you, you do get a chance to get a couple more cores to power those up. Um, but before you do, we have to escape this chunk of land. And Chris, I'm going to throw it to you just to describe what we have here. It's it's a neat little space. Yeah. So obviously, because there are three huge AA guns, this little chunk of land is a huge wreck. Like there are a bunch of wrecked UNSC ships around here. So there's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you can go through. Uh, it's very interesting. It obviously gives you a lot of. It gives you a reason of why you have access to all the UNSC gear while you're here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's like, true. hey, the ship is crashed. Let me salvage and see if I can find anything. I love that. It's so well laid out. Like, there's just so many weapons kicking around, which is good because, like, you know fobs, so you can't generate your weapons, but there's so many other weapons just scattered around there. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. I like it. 
Yeah, it's it's an interesting setting for um a little like so cool. sub story like this. Like you literally boots on the ground, you get to run around. It feels very Halo, where you yeah. know you you would lose all of the open world stuff. You're just on this big chunk of land, and you get to run around and just do the regular, you know, run and gun, destroy the towers. It's kind of like that mission in Reach, where you mm-hmm. just yeah, have this level, that big it, this... chunk. I like that this is so self-contained. You can call it a level. You can call it a mission. Like this is yeah. just like a level in Halo, and it's perfect. Nice little three little egg ones you got to take out. Each one is slightly different. You got loads of encounters. There's Marines and stuff like that. Weapons everywhere. It's fun. It's super fun. I love it. And there are a couple of vehicles, right? Like there's some ghosts. There's some ghosts and more hogs kicking around. Yep. No, there's there a is. ghost. You there's can't ghosts fly. Warthogs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a warthog. That's right. Yeah. So you can tool around a little bit. Uh, no tanks or anything like that. But yeah, no, it's it's a it's a fun spot, and um, again, it's the demo, which uh, is also cool to explore. Uh, and I remember when we 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 saw the demo, we were like, oh, I wonder if you can explore here, here, and here, and all that sort of stuff. Not, you can't necessarily do all those things that we'd hoped for in this chunk of land, but a lot of those things you can find elsewhere. You know, where there's like little dungeons you can climb in and go have some cool encounters on the map elsewhere, but. Regardless, um, which which way did you guys go? I'm going to take us from the east to the north to the west. Did you guys did you guys have a pattern that you've done in uh, to do these AA guns? Because the dialogue that we get is all the same order, no matter which one you do. But the encounters are obviously different. So David, do you, do you have a way? Started, oh yeah, go ahead, Krista. I started on the far right, and I worked my way yep. from there. That's what I did. Okay, cool. David, the far right. That feels so weird. It's, I started immediately. I I used to always go to the one straight in front of me, like the Craig demo. That'd be the, that's okay. the one I'm, I've almost always done first. Now mm-hmm. today, when I was replaying it, I made a deliberate conscious effort to not go to that one first. Um, I don't know what maybe just because I'm simple and I'm like me go forwards and, and that's kind of what I did. <laughs> um, but like I mean, the very first time I played it, I also spent a ton of time exploring because I was just like must find everything. There must mm-hmm. be audio logs. There must be weapons here. Like I must know it all. Um, so I spent a ton of time in the graveyard just going through the ships looking for stuff, which is cool because there's loads of rocket launchers and there are Spartan cars and stuff to find in here. So I, I like mm-hmm. that and, and audio logs, which is pretty fun. So um, today I think I did the east one, the one that doesn't have a lift, but has Marines uh, around it. Near it. I think I don't remember which one is which. Um, that's you, where I started you, today. You know what I didn't list? Yeah, so we'll start in the east. The, um, there are propaganda towers too. There's a few. I want to say there's four. Is there four? Yeah, th- yeah, that feels right. Yeah, I think there's four. Um, and those are those are fun. Actually, one of them starts yelling at you right away, uh, yep. right when you get off, which is fun. <laughs> so uh, I went east, and on the east was the one with the hunters. So I guess right or east. Um, but so yeah go go whichever way you want but we'll take you we'll take you this way so i went over to the right um and it's fun just to just have the task of eliminate the banished gun batteries as they call them um in order to escape like i said you can't fast travel or anything like that so i went to the to the east and there's these two hunters like just stationed underneath this thing obviously there's there's um jackals and there's i think some brutes down there uh, there's other other resistance, but the big thing is those hunters, and they're they're kind of tucked in, nestled in there. So the way that I went and went about this one is I there's like a series of rocks on one side, so I found those rocks and just was like peppering all my grenades and <laughs> and just kind of you know hiding behind these things and la- launching everything over. I ended up killing one of them and take doing enough damage to the other one before um, before I was able to take them both out and then. I think I also just sniped. Uh, there are quite a few jackals scattered around, so I just sniped the jackals that were hiding around. There's a couple actually hidden down beneath, so they they are um, they do a good job of uh, you know providing some resistance before you can go up the grav lift. But um, you can again you can tackle it pretty much any way. Krista, were you sniping or did you kind of take this this one head on? Uh, this one is very convenient because uh, they are posted up right by this like little cave. And the mm-hmm. uh, little cave is full of, um, you know, f- fusion coils and uh, rocket launchers. So I ran yes. straight in there and grabbed that shit and just blew them up. <laughs> oh, nice. So you had your back to the cave and then we're killing them from inside the cave? Yeah. Nice. That's a good way to go. David, how about you? Uh, 
Um, today I brought a rocket launcher with me, so I didn't have to mm. do that. But that's pretty much what I always would do because that's where there's a load of rocket launchers down the base. Um, what did I do with this one today? Yeah, I took this one on my own today. I think it might have been the first one I did actually to come here. So there's like a little tunnel that you can kind of sneak up on the left to, which is pretty cool when you approach it. And there's like a sleeping ground in there and a couple of jackets to take out. You can kind of get yourself up on the ridge up to the left of it, which is pretty cool. So I like to do that and the snipe out the smaller dudes. And then as much as I can, lure out the hunters to where like all the big coils are and stuff like that. And use that to kind of take them out. And then mm-hmm. when I obviously chuck a ton of grenades and then make a dash for the rocket launcher most of the times. Yeah. And they're cool. I like, how, I like how beefy the hunters are, but they're not a lot of them in this game. And I appreciate that too. They're a difficult challenge that aren't overused. So they're good. Yep. Totally agree. Once you see me, like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. And they're they're bullet spongy, but um, you know, it's it switches it up enough. Okay, so we go up into inside the oh, so just a note really quickly, I guess because I'm on build the blocks and then you know have the mega constructs uh, mega constructs roots. Um, so they they did do a set Never heard for this. Um, so there's an AA gun that you can buy, um, and it's a neat little set. It has um. Uh, who is it? It's nobody in this mission. It's, uh, oh, it's Hyperius. Yes. So I guess it, Hyperius is in this mission later on. Um, so Hyperius comes with it and then a chief and a couple other figures, but on the ends. So if you imagine the AA gun, there's those, the, like where the feet sit, there's like these tall little, I don't know, they look like more fusion coils or some sort of an energy coil. Um, but on the set, you can like pop those things off. Like it's, it's a function of the set. Which I'm wondering, like earlier on, like an earlier build of this mission, maybe you had to, in order to destroy the A gun, you just had to sh- pepper those things, kind of like those big towers that we have in the outposts, you know, that pop out of the ground. So they like built that in, and maybe they decided to change how you know these encounters work. But it's just interesting to note that, you know, again, this mega construct sets you. There's literally, literally like a little f- switch to flick, and then these things will pop off. But not so much in the finished game. So you go up the the gravity lift on the inside and the weapon you, and chief have a little bit of a dialogue. She um, figures out how she can dis- disable it. And then um, before you actually disable it all the way, because she's able to open like a, a coil up, up in front of you, uh, in front of this um, hollow table, which is really cool, by the way, this this hollow table of the, the island that you're on, then Eshram pops on. And this will be a theme throughout all three of these. Well, just two of them, actually. Um, but Eshram pops on, and he talks shit to you. And it's it's they did change the dialogue from the demo, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, I remember he, the demo dialogue just, is a little different. Yeah, he just, like, name drops a little more. I mean, they just changed the dialogue so that it didn't reveal too much. But Yeah. So he talks about how UNSC lost the war months ago, and, you know... He goes on his rant, and he has this great uh, cadence, you know. People are broken, scattered, hunted. You know, like he has all the... <laughs> like, I just want to listen to him talk and talk It's shit. funny. It's, he's totally trying to... It's like he's trying to hype you up to come fight him. Like, oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Like He's just like he's just like a fight promoter. He's just like, come on, come and get me. Yeah, he really is. So he talks about how they're one step ahead and this and that. And then, and then he drops about the Harbinger. So we've seen the Harbinger now. And then he mentions the Harbinger and that the Banished share the same goals. That was another thing in the demo. They were like, mm, what is the, who is the Harbinger? All this other stuff. So we don't really necessarily, as a part of the story, know what those same goals are. Um, we will find some audio. Actually, one of the audio logs that we find uh, in this area does talk a little bit about that um, with Eshram and, and laying out what those are. Um, so more or less, yeah, he's just saying, like, let's fight. You and me, it's going to happen. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so then he goes away, and sh- then this little coil thing in front of you, this little light switch in front of you um, pops open, and then you can shoot that or bash it with your elbow, whatever you want, and then the thing, the AA gun will explode. If you if you do stay in too long, you will die with the explosion. Oh, FYI. so you tested that. I've tested oh, that, cool. yes. <laughs> I was always curious. I took a little too long once. I forget what exactly was happening. Oh, you know what it was? Is um, I guess I'll tell the story now. But um, in the next one, I was able to get a ghost up in there. Or actually, no, <laughs> a ghost. What happened? I think a ghost followed me in. 
I think that's what it was. Like a grunt took a ghost in somehow. And so there was a ghost inside of it. And I was trying to get back into the ghost. I was expecting the ghost to be gone after the button was hit. Um, or after, you know, I, I activated the explosion, but the ghost was still there. And so I, oh. for whatever reason, I struggled to get in fast enough. And then, and then it, everything exploded and I died, which was unfortunate. But then it reset back to, and the ghost was still there. So I was able to have the ghost after the explosion. So, yeah. Anyway, so top out and, um, then we're going to go up to the Northern gun after you, exp after you blow this one up. And this one also has an elevator and here. This is the point where I was decided to exp to test my um, threat sensor a little bit, and I had powered my threat sensor all the way up, and the radius on this thing is giant now. So I just, I peppered two of these things out there, and because there's lots of rocks and lots of places for the banish to hide, but if you pop out two threat sensors, then you can almost see ev all of them, like everywhere they are, and it's, it makes makes this encounter a lot easier and that and again that's just to get up the elevator um there is a ghost nearby there's like a little ridge um or i guess a ledge um to the right of the elevator there's a ghost just kind of parked over there so you can go and grab that as well and then um head up into the esca or elevator and then um i'm trying to think here the rest of this this actually this area is is pretty well defended overall there's like a building off in the distance there's a turret over there that uh, doesn't want you to do what you need to do there are lots of elites around plenty of you know other grunts and and jackals so this one this one might have been one of the more difficult encounters for me how did you take it david um i've done a few ways um i do like taking the ghost and bringing it up the elevator Mm -hmm. That that's pretty fun. And then taking using the ghost around up there is is pretty fun and kind of unique. Um, this one when you get to the top, I think doesn't that you you kind of go. I think there's marines here that you can rescue. Not in this one. That's in, in the far one? west one. That's yeah. in the far west one. Okay, one of them has like marines inside it and marines up outside to the right. So like there's like two groups of marines mm -hmm. that you can rescue. So this is the other one. Then I can't remember. It's in the ghost inside. Okay, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I just brought the ghost up to it and just minced around there with, with different kind of dudes. Um, is this the one? Who do you fight underneath? You don't fight the hunter, so it's probably just a bunch of elites. Yeah, it's just a bunch of dudes that, down underneath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're just kind of peppering you from all, uh, all around. Not, yeah, not particularly special on this one. Just use the ghost, I'm pretty sure I did today. Yeah. Krista, what was your approach? Uh, I just ran and gun this one. Um, There's a lot of like little buildings and stuff so just kind of mm -hmm. went in and out of those grabbed the resources in them and just, just shot people i yeah. shot a lot of people <laughs> the turret is always like a tempting option but it usually doesn't work out like the, the shade turret i mean <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah. i want to jump I in that thing and just, die yeah every the, time everybody points their guns at you and then yeah doesn't i, I just long. threw a fusion coil at it <laughs> yeah and then it's just gone. same same and then it's just gone. So clear out this area, and then we do get another, you know, go up the grav lift. I already told my story about the, the ghost. Then we do get another chat with Eshram. And let's see, what does he say? He says, how many Spartans remain? Do you even know? There would have been 50 at Laconia Station. Hmm, maybe more. Such a loss. So he's taunting you more. Um, have you guys looked into the Laconia Station stuff? What happened is this, there? Is this the one that maybe cortana reveals more on later mm, is that that one it might be okay yeah i did want to be. say more for now yep yeah bad things happen there yeah <laughs> uh and then he says do do you feel it in your heart does he does it leave a hole it's so interesting because he's talking he's taunting he's trying to rile up chief but chief is so you know traditionally so emotionless like he's he's you know over the last few games he has shown some more emotion and then in, I guess in this game, he, he has shown some, there's, you know, we've talked about like some tender moments with the other Marines or the, the Spartans that he's found. So there, there is a heart in his chest. Um, it's just interesting how Atriox is trying to bring out that pride so fiercely, right? Eshram. Like he's, or, oh yeah, Eshram. Um, he's, he's just really like getting Hammering him to home, up. baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's, it's, it is getting a little old, I feel like, at this point of the game too, though. Because he's been doing it for so long. Um, but, you know, 
it, it, it is what it is. I, I enjoy it overall, but it's, it's at the same point. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to fight you later on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hilarious, though. I mean, he's funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's a real uh, stand-up guy. He is. He's a, he's a great or- orator. He is. He talks about uh, Atrax a bit here and talking about how he's his finest recruit and then um, his sacrifice. So, you know, kind of talking about how Atrax isn't around anymore. And that uh, he mentions the hand of Atriox, and that talks about how they are Spartan killers, and they are coming for him. Uh oh. Well, my favorite part, Colin, is that he says "fight well," and then it's Spartan, and then he kind of cuts off, and the weapon immediately goes, "Thank you. What do we do now?" Like, <laughs> she's just like totally politely, just like, "Okay, thank you. What do we do yep. now?" I love it. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so we do the same thing that we did in the last one, and we um, blow up the little coil, and we, then we escape and jump out. And then at this point, we do get a little extra, Ooh. I believe. Isn't it at this point, or is it the next one? Hold on a second. Yeah, that's number two. Where's number three from my notes? Yeah, we do get a little extra here. Okay, so at this point, we get on the, on the comms. We get um, who pops in. So the weapon says, Chief, we're being contacted on UNSC channels. Com signature belongs to a Spartan, Theodore Sorrell, which we found a couple missions ago. And he goes, put him through. And then uh, you don't know who it is unless you have the, um, you know, on-screen dialogue. But it's Hyperius. And Hyperius says, Spartan, Spartan, I know you can hear me. Will you die with honor? And then he says, I doubt it. You are human, weak, pathetic. I will crack your armor, peel you from your shell. It will not be my first Spartan blood, but it will be the sweetest. So as we talked in the couple missions ago, was it Conservatory, I think, where we find Sorrel? And so Hyperius is the one that killed Sorrel, and he took this comms from him. So now he's able to communicate with Chief. And so they're actually, so it's interesting though, is that are they listening to us the whole way? Or maybe they can just talk to us one way. I don't know. They know where I don't they think, are. I mean. Yeah, I don't think they're listening because it was the weapon who kind of identified this. So I'm, I'm okay. sure she could like switch it off if she wanted to or whatever. Yeah. So, so like then we how, still. Um, Go ahead. I like how every time someone's really mean to Chief, the weapon's just like, "Oh wow, he re- he really doesn't he doesn't like you." Okay, that's nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then we head towards the third AA gun, and so at this point, you're kind of in the northeast side, northern side of the um the landmass, and there is a cool like it's it's a cool little mountainous area. And you can find, I know we'll talk about it in the, the, well, will we talk about the Easter eggs? No, we probably Mm. won't. Um, On the top of this mountain, I believe, was it the Arbiter up there? Uh, The Uh, little plushie doll? Oh, yeah. Let's see, which one is it? Uh, Arbiter doll, yeah. I remember finding that. That that was the first one that I found uh, when I played the game originally. I was like, oh, this is cool. It doesn't do anything, but it's cool. (laughs) Not even an achievement. Like, come on, give me a chance. Yeah. I, I wanted know. to pick it up like a fusion coil and throw it, and then it make oh, like little squeaky cool. noises. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you throw it at a at a at a um, brute, and it just makes a squeak noise and falls off him. <laughs> yeah, something like that would have been good. There are also oh, there are five. I guess we'll mention them because we don't have a separate episode for Easter eggs on this. But um, there is the Arbiter doll. There's a red versus blue Easter egg, which is kind of weird. It's it's near the the last egg. I didn't go find it. I'm just on one of these uh, interactive maps. Um, but it looks like it is a picture of a grunt in red and a dead marine in blue, kind of in, I don't know, a little hole. So I don't know if that is a red versus blue specific, like, encounter, or if it's just, you know, the red and the blue. There is a Sergeant Johnson doll as well, kind of in the middle of the map. There's the Craig photo I mentioned, and then there's one more on the west side, which is where we're going. There's a grunt doll on a little ledge. So we do find the grunt doll. He's cute. He's a cute little grunty boy. That's one plushie I really actually do want. As I have a chief plushie, but I want a grunt plushie. Somebody give me a grunt plushie. I have a it's sticky grenade one. plushie, so I get to chuck Ooh, it at people. It's great. That's perfect. That's really good. That's really good. Mm-hmm. But it needs to be one of those, the Nerf balls that has, like, the... Velcro on it, 
that you have the <laughs> other end because you could stick it to somebody. That's yeah. what you need. That would be amazing. All right, so we'll travel to the AA gun on the west side of the map, and, you, and there, there's like a, there's a Atriox tower here, propaganda tower, kind of on the way. So there's that, and then there's an actual propaganda tower um, that you can shoot. And then again, I said I mentioned the, the doll at the top of this mountain here, and so you wind your way around, and then there, here is where there's a couple Marines, so you can get a couple Marines on your squad. Uh, as you're heading down to this last AA gun, I guess you would you would if you did the other this AA gun first, you probably wouldn't get these marines until you head to the you know the one we just did. So grab them; they come in handy. Give them some power weapons, and then head down to this last AA gun. And this is this is the demo fight. So this is one that most people are familiar with. So if you saw the demo, there's a shade turret kind of right in the middle, and there's a bunch of elites around. There's a couple of brute. There's, there's a little bit of everything down here. So um, I'm trying to think the way that I went about it is I kind of snuck around a little bit. I had a rocket launcher that I had picked up and I had my Marines with me and I were letting, I was trying to let them do a little bit of work. Um, the grab lift is already on by the way. So you could, could just run in. And uh, that's something I didn't mention the, the last two AA guns, you do have to hit a button in order to activate the grab lift, but this one, it's already, already there. You don't have to do anything. So you could just run into the grab lift, I guess. You'll probably, you might get chased by some grunts or something like that, but you could just hop in and uh, destroy it. But uh, yeah, I think I just tried to sneak around a little bit, tried to throw some uh, rocket launchers at some of the, the banished below and just kind of slowly took everything out. I don't know, David, did you do anything special on this last one? Um, but because I was doing it in the order that was wrong for me, I came at it from the mountaintop. But yeah. when you come around there, there's two Marines that you can rescue, like you mentioned, and a couple of dudes. So I rescued them, gave them some power weapons. Um, they're the Marines are really good with um, the pla- not the plasma. What am I thinking of? The Ravager. They're really good mm. with it. So like, mm-hmm. I gave one a Ravager. I think one had the rock launcher. I just I had it with me, so I just gave it to him. Um, they came with me the whole way. They were great. Um, so you kind of come down, you fight, you fight in like a gold elite, I think, and then you fight like a bunch of um, grunts and stuff like that when you come in through the side. So there is a lift that you don't have to take when you come that way, but there are more Marines down at the base if you want to bring them. The only thing is the Marines won't go on the lifts, which is very annoying. Yeah. Um, right. So unless you had a Warhog to bring them in, they just won't come. Um, so I kind of freed those. And then there's more, there's another two Marines in the back of the kind of, let's say, the mid area. Um, so I rescued them, killed all those dudes, fully equipped those marines and then you have to kind of go into the building and up through it to get these two little br- bridges that lead you across to the turret and that's a great mm-hmm. little fight i love that little sequence fighting up here i had all my marines it was so chaotic it was awesome it was a cool battle i think there's um i think there's brutes in here with rocket launchers so there's at least one i think um because mm-hmm. i remember getting hit by one at one stage that actually killed me today um so that was kind of fun that's kind of what i did i just fought with my marines had a great time just like a nice yeah. little battle here with my bros and um, just took everybody out eventually, which is pretty cool with a cool little marine fight. The Look. the elevators are cool. So on this this one and then the other one, like when you go up the elevator and kind of stop at the top, the platforms they're well defended. There's lots you know to hide behind, lots of weapons. Lots I appreciate of, that they're different. large enough to take vehicles on. Like you can take warhogs yeah. up there, you can take up ghosts. I, I appreciate that a lot. That's really cool. Yeah, Chris, the thoughts on this last one? Oh, it's good. Um, I definitely didn't do it as thought out as David. I just kind of went up the lift and killed everyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't. I, I, I saved the Marines, some of them, uh, the ones at the lift. Cause Don't tell a lie, Chris. Screaming. <laughs> saved the Marines. <laughs> I saved them because they wouldn't stop screaming. So I was just like, okay, well, if it gets you to shut up. Uh, and then I went up the lift. <laughs> yep. Nice. So this time we go inside, and uh, does the weapon say, like she says, oh, we're probably going to hear from Ashram again, and then yeah. doesn't pop on, which is a little bit of a twist, I guess. And then she's like, fun. oh, I miss <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Like, oh, that's disappointing. So we don't, do, we don't hear from him, um, but we do blow it up, yeah. and then we hop out. And then we see this, and I don't know if the phantom that, like, 
You well, at least I saw a phantom go by immediately. There is a phantom. Phantom have the bosses. I think that's the. I think that's what's implied that they're dropping in to deal with you here now. Yeah, like they're tracking him. They're like they know he what he's up to, and now the Spartan killer is going to come and kill a Spartan, or we're going to kill them. So they hop. They are now Tavares and Hyperius. Who again? We we were teased these dudes at some point before the game came out, and we got like some cool art of them. Hyperius again has a Mega Constructs figure that we've had for a while on his shoulder. This is the famous shoulder of Spartan Locke, his helmet, the Hunter helmet. And we don't know if that is his helmet or not. Still, it's still TBD. So, um, and you do get to see that. So you get to see that on the little figure, minifigure, but, and I think it's on, there's like a jazz where it's like a bigger figure. And then when, once we're done with this fight, you do, you can like look at his body and yep, that, that very, looks a lot like Locke's helmet there. So I've never done anyway, that. maybe they will. Thank play with God that. he saved the Halo universe by getting rid of that <laughs> shit character. <laughs> we'll see, you know, we'll see. TBD whether or not he's around or not. But Hyperius has a helmet on his shoulder that looks very much like Jameson Locks. Uh, Chris, why don't you take us through this fight? The, the dudes are in the middle, and then one of them has... Hyperius has a chopper. It's like a fancier chopper than what we've seen. And then Tuvaras has a scrap cannon, I believe. And he just kind of peppers you from the distance. And they're both in the middle. And it's a little bit of a challenge, I would say. You know, it's fairly interesting. So... Uh, the nice thing, I always I always go for Hyperius first. I think most people do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Hyperius is really nice because you can lure him pretty far away from Tavares. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can lure him behind a bunch of wreckage and stuff that isn't far from him. So it's not out of Hyperius' range, but Tavares like in can't... his chopper, right? Yeah, yeah. Tavares yeah. can't pepper you. And once you get him there... Uh, you steal his chopper and, uh, you know, use it as long as you can because mm-hmm. when he's in the chopper, it can last for 40 minutes. But when I'm in the <laughs> chopper, it lasts 40 seconds. So, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, you use the sh- chopper. You can get a really good chunk of his health down through that. And then obviously when the chopper explodes, his shields are still down. So you can kind of pepper him from there. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I have? I think I just had an assault rifle at this point. I had really? an assault rifle and a disruptor, so I, I just killed him with an assault rifle, and then I I think I well, picked up a, a longer range weapon, like a commando or something for Hyperius, but uh, once Tavares, Tavares or once once uh, Hyperius is dead, Tavares like, is like, alright, I'm gonna jump now. So he starts <laughs> jumping all over the place. Yeah, he does. I love the scrap cannons, by the way. I hate when they're used against me, but oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he just starts jumping all over the place like some kind of weirdo. So, uh, you know, I had the disruptor, so I used that to get his shields down, which is pretty easy. And then, you know, just peppered him here and there, ducked for cover. You know, he always somehow appeared right behind me. Um, not sure how he did that, <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, you just kind of, uh, the nice there's thing is- There's annoying guys at the bottom, too. Like, I found there's, like, a skewer brute that you gotta take out, otherwise oh, yeah. he's gonna n- knock you out. There's a couple other guys, there's some grunts. Like, there's enough of, uh, I guess, reinforcements around that if you don't take them out, they'll they'll just be annoying enough to, to take you down. Yeah, yeah, and I always, I always take the ads out. Um, I did take the skewer and hit, uh, Tavares a couple times with that as well. Um nice. But at the base of his, like, little tower, once Tavares moves, there's just a shit ton of UNSC weapons. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. if you're running low on ammo, go there. There's, like, everything there. So, uh, yeah, he just kind of jumps around like a weirdo, and you just kind of pepper him <laughs> until he just dies. And it's great. Mm-hmm. It's a fun fight. I like it. I like having the guy up top and the guy on the ground and kind of just the dichotomy of that. But, you know, it's a cool fight. Uh, Obviously, when... You have an enemy in a vehicle. You just capture the vehicle every right. single time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, with the grapple shot, it makes it so easy. Yeah. And, and I feel like my video game sensibilities kicked in here. It's like, oh, there's two bosses. So in order to kill two bosses at the same time, I need to separate them. 
So like that, that strategy, like just clicked with me right away. Um, whereas if you don't do that, it, like, it, it, I guess you probably don't have to do that, but they could have made the AI a lot harder here too. Oh, right. Yeah. They could have had them like always nearby each other and that would have made it very, very frustrating. How was it on legendary David? Did you get to this point on legendary? Yeah, it's a balls. Um, Having said that now, I was ready for it, so I had yeah. heavy weapons. There's rocket launchers and hydras around here. You really have to focus on one of them. Um, lots of electric grenades, take down the shields immediately, stun those mm-hmm. vehicles. Um, I did a bunch of it from a distance, so a bit of sniping, where he's jumping around on top. There's loads of coils, so like if you time it right, you can detonate like a whole tower, that, and he's on mm-hmm. it, and that totally wipes him out. Um, so that's actually pretty easy if you, if you get it that way. I also tend to do it with a bunch of Marines. Give them weapons, bring them oh, with yeah. me. Um, if you bring in, you can grab a Warthog, stick a guy with a rocket on, rock, rocket launcher on it, and just fucking wipe out Tiberius. Like, take out that oh. fucking front chopper. Like, it's actually not the most difficult one. And because it's a big open area with lots of weapons, you can just run away. Do you know what I mean? If you're getting, yeah. like, overwhelmed. So it's not like a proper boss battle. So it's easy to kind of run away and come back and regroup and stuff like that. So it's, it's not too point. difficult on Legendary. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to hear. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a good, the, the setting that Chris had described before. It's like this this graveyard, which is cool setting to have this giant fight. Um, and you can, lots of nooks and crannies to go and hide and regroup and all that sort of stuff. So overall, like it, it's a, it is a cool fight. Um, not as difficult maybe as they could have made it for us, which is nice, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a fun setting. It, it, it's one of those things too. I think we've complained about it. It's like, oh, here, there, here's two more really cool banished characters that we just kill right away. You know, there's like one or two lines of dialogue from Hyperius and that's it. Yeah. Very little build up. This is the hand and it's like, oh, the hands, right. Can I do all like instantly dead? It's like, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, exactly. And like um, they don't, they don't good. really link it back very well to the fact that this is the guy who beat the shit out of Sorrel. Do you know what I mean? Like Chief was mm-hmm. pissed off at the beginning, the initial phase of like discovering that Spartan, talking about the fact that a brute beat the crap out of him. You killed two brutes, and she's like, "Is that it?" And like, "No, they're still at large." Um, so it it, it, it kind of felt like they were trying to build up to something, but I don't think it connected really well, yeah. uh, especially with like there can be a significant period of time between those two missions. If you're me, right. so I, I think yep. they could have done, uh, they could have done a better job. I, I think uh, I'll bring it back. Yeah, I think it, it just goes back to the uh, the audio logs are a great idea, um, but you know, just a little bit of video or a little bit better job of connecting all that stuff that they're telling in the in the audio with the you know what's yeah. going on on screen would have would have helped hammer that home. But you know, if you are really paying attention and all that sort of stuff, I'm sure it'll click with you, and it was more meaningful moment but otherwise it's just like oh okay cool this guy's talking to me on some comms that he found no he, he's talking in the comms that he found because he killed the guy that you just you know that you just found in the previous mission yeah true uh okay so we are essentially done with the fighting part of it um i think you may you know maybe you'll find some banished scattered throughout the area after this if you want to go clean up and find some stuff but the last thing that we need to do now is we need to go find the the pilot because he's no longer in the Pelican. He went and hid somewhere because he's a coward. No, he's, <laughs> he just wants to go home and he's not a Spartan. So he, he wisely went and hid somewhere. So you got to go find him. And we got to go have a little chat with him. Let's see. Is there anything else that happens before then? No, nope, I think can we can run just around if you chat. want to, but yeah. Oh, I did want to tell a little bit about my story. Um, my story was similar to Chris's. I went and stole the chopper um, and killed Hyperius fairly quickly. Um, I had a gravity hammer with me. So I kicked him off of the chopper, uh, destroyed the chopper. Uh, well, he destroyed the chopper. And then I just I did my grapple shot to him with my gravity hammer and just, like, bashed him with that, and he died, which was pretty nice. neat. And then um, after that, let's see here. I still had the gravity hammer for... Tavares, but I had to shoot him from a little far away, and I had I had to work my way up to get close to him, and then I used the good gravity hammer to kill him. This is just the last time, right? Um, I just figured I wanted to see if that strategy worked, and it did. A couple couple of grab hammer shots, and they both die. They both go squish. 
Okay, so now we gotta go find the pilot. And the pilot isn't in the pelican, he's up on the ridge. It's really close, um, but he's up on, on the ridge a little bit. And uh, we gotta go have a little chat with him. David, you wanna talk us through this? Yeah, this is probably one of the most interesting sequences in, in the game, uh, I think. And also, mm -hmm. I like I like how good it is for like what it sets up, but like I feel like they never come back to it, and I kind of really wanted them to. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the pilot having his absolute weakest moment, absolute breakdown. He's giving out the chief. He's like, three condors. It's hard to find one, but we found three. Do you know how hard that is? And then all of them are just scrap. And like, I, I don't know why he's so disappointed. I think it was really fucking obvious that none of these fucking condors were going anywhere. They are literally pieces. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm not really sure. But anyway. Well, I think he wanted a slip space drive from them so that they could get the hell out. He he did. He did. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know. They look like bits. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, so the, the, the advantage seemed clever enough to not leave like a slip space drive in a ship just sitting in a graveyard. Like, sure. Uh, I feel like they, they would be one of the key pieces of technology you'd go and scavenge. Um. So anyhow, uh, he's freaking out. He's saying it's all useless. It's all fucking useless. I'm not supposed to be here. I belong in there. I, i.e., like a piece of work is drunk. I should be dead. And then he kind of explains that he's not even a soldier. He stole. He's not even a pilot. He stole the pelican. And mm -hmm. when that happened, I was like, "Oh, this is cool. This is interesting." Now this character makes sense. Why he's so whiny? Why he's so ill-disciplined? It's not a soldier. Right. Um. And there's a conversation later. I think it's actually during gameplay. Yeah. Where the weapon asks him, like, who are you? And he's like, what's your job? He's like, oh, he, he's a civilian engineer. He was a volunteer. Right. He just wanted to help. Exactly. And that's really cool. I like that. And then he just explains that when Chief, when Chief died, he just like, oh, fuck, we're done. And uh, he just grabbed, he just legged it uh, off the infinity and just like, okay, here's a pelican. I'm grabbing this. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of what he did. I, I, I like that as an origin story. That's really interesting. Um. Uh, anyway, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, here and in this area, I don't think. Ask him his fucking name. What? Why is that? Yeah. Like a reveal. Like that should be here and now. There should be more of the backstory, more of who he is. Um, Chief doesn't really seem to care. Like, like that he's not a soldier. I think Chief, Chief which is kind of cool in, in some ways. I kind of like that. The Chief just was like, "I'm not bothered. You're, you know, you're human. You're on my side. You're part of this. You're my pilot, even if you're not a pilot." Um. So he he's kind of like you know. Have you, you don't understand what it's like to be scared, like to be actually scared because you're a chief, you know, you're mm -hmm. perfect or whatever. And then he kind of, chief comes down and kind of like, I like he like collapses on his knees. He's just at his lowest point and chief comes down and like takes a knee beside him. And he's kind of like, I'm worthless. I'm a piece of garbage. And this is a great moment by chief. I think this is really, really great. Uh, I also love like when he takes his knee. There's a solid thump, and the screen shakes a little bit because he's so. Yeah. Loud. I I love that. That's just a small detail. It's awesome. Um, this is cool, and I think this is this would be like a kind of almost a helmet reveal moment in another, yeah. another kind of area. I mean, this this would be like oh, I could take my helmet off and talk to this guy as a human. Um, but he's he asked him like, Chief, have you ever failed? And Chief is like, Yeah, pretty much. Like I should have protected Cortana. I should have stopped everything from going wrong. Chief looks at like everything around him as being his fault mm -hmm. because he failed Cortana, and he says, "I won't fail you." Um, I like that, and then, like the weapon pops up here, and then, like just it's a nice moment between the three characters, and and I wish from here there was like more build up with these three being like this is the beginnings of a th of the the team. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. this is Chief's new team, um, but it doesn't go anywhere from there. I mean. It's kind of like Chief is like the only way home is to go through the banished, and the weapon's like we need you, and it's like okay, Chief is like you know we can fix this, we don't have anything, but we can do it together. This is the weapon is like we can do it together. We don't need a lot, we just need us, which is a good moment. This is a good like yeah. fuck it. Do you know what I mean? We're all that's left, but we're all that we need. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you're you can just fly any broken pelican, which is fantastic. So you know what I mean? This is great. Um. And Real quick uh, tangent here, sorry. Um, so Chief it. blames himself for not being able to protect Cortana or fix Cortana or save everything. Yeah. Do you guys think, like, based off of all of the games um, and everything else we know, do he even have a chance to save Cortana? You know what I mean? I think like, it's kind of, not really. But I don't like, think he was ever in a position where he could have actually done what he wanted to do. No, I, but like, I mean, this is from Halo Four, really, essentially. Do you know what I mean? Where maybe. He feels, like, do you know what I mean? 
it's a case of like the whole point of what he was trying to do from the beginning of like Halo 4 realizing that she was freaking out was like we need to get you home you know what I mean we need to get you home we can get you fixed Halsey will know yeah. that's our objective and he doesn't do that he veers off he goes after the the didactus that whole storyline and then there's but he had to right like he had he to had, stop the didact. I guess so but that's you know I guess that's kind of she feels the guilt of like prioritizing the mission and the world and people over his friend and his do you know what i mean he, his, his he had to stop thing. the war he had to stop the didact and instead of like being able to save cortana cortana saved him and maybe we yeah. talked about that at that point but yeah that's i don't know it's and then, he's also so close he was at yeah. earth yeah yeah and also like, like the the real catalyst to all this cortana stuff was all the way back in halo ce when he put her into the ring yeah yeah, that that's, that was True. the beginning of her end. We we don't we really realize at the time, and then there's also the fact that he left her behind, the whole grave mind torture. Like that's all probably still weighing on him. And then the fact that he couldn't mm-hmm. get to her in Halo Five, and that like that whole story was weird enough anyway. But obviously there was an element of could Chief get to her and maybe not prevent the whole created situation? Do you know what I mean? He probably feels mm-hmm. very much guilt on that as well. Um, so. I think that's where it's all coming down. I kind of like it, but you have to know all that. Like, I just told you a lot of right. stuff that's based over, like, 20 years of games. Do you know what I mean? A box and shit. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? So, like, it, it's... I like that they hint at it. They don't go in too deep. Um, But I wish there was more after this. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. straight away, the pilot's immediately on your side. And now he's happy pilot. And do you know what I mean? And that, that's it. So, I, I kind of felt there should have been a couple of more steps to get him there. Yeah. He was like, "All right, my existential crisis is over. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then we have a little conversation. So after that happens, we have a little conversation with the Harbinger in Eshram. Uh, let's see here. What's that dialogue? They go back and forth a bit. Um, they're looking at the well. He's looking at the hollow table, and she's floating around in her little hologram. Um, and she's more or less. They're talking about this last spire, and well, she I love that they're like to protect it. The hologram starts with like a bunch of dead brutes, and the Harbinger's right, like, yeah. "You're losing control." Do you know what I mean? And she's like, "Send in everybody. Everybody should go in. Send in the whole army against Chief." And Iman's like, "Odds will not break him." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, fuck that. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. That's it." Do you know what I mean? I love that that's where he looks at Chief as well. And also, I feel like he doesn't want that because he wants to fight Chief himself. He doesn't want some nobody taking him out, um, mm-hmm. which I think is pretty cool. Yep. Um, and then they're just uh, talking about protecting this this spire, um, more or less saying what we figured out in the last one of the last missions was that there's, there's the command spire, so protect this one because the Harbinger um, is wanting to you know, move forward with the Reformation. Eshram hits a button, and then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of of reinforcements around the the, the spire. Eshram plays neat. Halo Wars. That's what he does. And he's just playing <laughs> exactly. Halo Wars on the map, sending some troops and units down to build a base. And then they, in the very end of this scene, they just talk shit to each other. Yeah. Uh, Eshram says, "Atriox believed you to be valuable. Prove him correct." And then she says, "When the Endless are found." And when you have your ring, then you will never question my worth, and I will never question your judgment. Oof. Yeah. I also That's love a how. Good line. Yeah, I love how like he's behind her, like about to freak out and lay into her, and then she just like cuts him off, and she disappears, and he just goes into a coffin fit. Yeah. And then, like, and that's cool. And then like the rest of the sequence is kind of interesting. Where he's like, "Bring me Chief alive." You have him and his buddy, um, Jaga. Jaga, fuck you, Jaga. You suck. And then. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like just get me cheap it's cool yeah there you go and then we go back to chief and in order to to advance to the next mission you can either hop in the back of the pelican or you could go and explore and, and do things um if you do go and explore and do things some of the things that you will find are the audio logs which we do want to cover here real quick um actually before we do that let's let's rate this mission quick Krista, how are you feeling? I love this mission. This mission's like a nine for me. Nice. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm up very high. Nine. Nine-ish? Nine I'm nine. I'm nine. I'm nine. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Nine's around. I'm happy with that. There's a fun fight, lots of stuff to do. It's wide open. It's not the corridor shooter, you know, that we've come off of what with the conservatory. Um it felt very halo, like you said, lots of toys. Yeah, I'm good with that. Nine it is. Alright. 
nine across the board. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, if you've done everything with, you know, every big mission unlocks a level of valor. It's like 300, 350 valor also. So at the end of this mission, because I had done everything, I unlocked the wasp. Same. Oh. Yeah, I got, I got it today as well after this mission. Mm-hmm. Which is like, oh, shit, because that comes in super handy in the next uh, section that we And I feel through. like, I know we kind of, uh, I mentioned before about, um, it doesn't really make sense why the wasp is, is here and not at the end, that the Rappahog is at the end. But that's really good that if you've done everything and you uh, think about it, you've just taken out the AA guns and now you have a wasp. That mm-hmm. totally makes sense. So I, I, it makes sense. And I only really thought of that today. So it kind of does make sense that the wasp is where it is in terms of Valor and that they give it to you here. Yeah, you wouldn't want to have the wasp before because you'd get shot down right away. Yeah, things. which makes sense. Like in lore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okie dokes. Let us do these audio logs. And here's so there's Spartan audio logs. There are five of them. There are from two stories. So there's Reverie number two. And then there's Retaliation. Uh, so again, these are the Spartan audio logs. So Reverie two and then Retaliation one, two, three, and four. So I just want to play all of them together and then we'll talk about them afterwards. Because okay. um, it's interesting. And I know we've already done podcasts on Podcast Evolved. Um, talking about these, but we'll go into just a little, a little more discussion on that, and then move on to the the banished chunk. There are three Eshram logs. Um, we'll just talk about those all together in one chunk. So, here you go. So, is it true? Report. Yes, the banished are deploying resource harvesters, and never mind that. Did you pull an entire lifeboat out of one of the breaches in the ring? I ordered the squad inside to take shelter from the explosion. I wasn't going to let them die in it. <laughs> Fine work, Stone. Day one was dicey for all of us. We're still trying to figure out what happened. I'm glad you kept a cool head. I lent a hand this time. I'm sure they'll have my back next. If their reports are any indication, those Marines will follow you anywhere. If we're going to take this ring back... We need everyone working together. Killing Eshram is the only viable option we have. A power vacuum like that would destabilize the banished and win us the footing we need to hold out until help arrives. I need volunteers, and I know I'll have no shortage of them. We all want a part of this. But we can't all go and leave Reverie undefended. So we're doing this the old-fashioned way. John Strauss. Are you kidding, Griffin? No, I'm not. This is the plan. A single strike team deep in banished territory. Agile, quiet, on foot. It's the only way it's gonna work. This might be a one-way trip. So we need people to stay. Or there won't be anything left to protect. It's not up for debate. Panago, Malik, Sarkar, and me. That's the roster. For an assassination op? Decided by drawing straws. No, Griffin. We need you here at the Reverie. The Marines need a leader. We all do. The decision's made. We're gonna get this done now. Take out Eshram and take control of this ring. And you're right. The Marines need a leader. That's why you're staying here. To lead in my absence. I can't do You can and you will. I know you will. No matter what happens. Spartans, if anybody can hear me, I'm proceeding. We've come too far to turn back. unprotected as you have yours. 
This is Griffin, for FFG 525. Reverie, do you read me? Griffin, you are badly injured, and your armor's medical systems are offline. Seek medical attention immediately. I went up a one-way encryption channel to Reverie's upspin transmitter. Encrypted one-way transmission confirmed. Record when ready. The mission was a failure. Eshram was waiting for us the whole time. Malik, Panago, Sarkar. All gone. Listen to me, Reverie. Eshram has dispatched the most soldier and asset they have available. Their goal is... We have only one objective now. It is not victory. It is not extraction. It is not even survival. We must deny the banished this ring, no matter what it costs us. Okay, so lots of stuff here. Uh, a lot of like backstory, but interesting backstory. We'll probably get more of this information given to us, or at least more depth in the book that is upcoming. Um, Ruben Ruben the protocol? book. Yeah, there you go. We got protocol. So the first one is debrief, um, and it's the second log from the Reverie storyline. And it just, uh, it actually, it's it's Griffin and Bonita Stone talking about, you know, how, um, you know, they're finding out what's going on with the Banish. Let's see, the date is December eighteenth, so it's real. It's still soon after um, all the stuff happened uh, with, uh, you know, Chief getting his butt kicked and he's gone and all that stuff. Um, so they're trying to figure out what's going on still. And then they describe a story where uh, Benita Stone like saved uh, a whole lifeboat of Marines by herself, which is pretty rad. It's really cool. It's a cool story. She's a really cool character. And I really like how they set her up. But like, I want to know more of her. And uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of kind of a shame that we all already know that she's gone, you know. But um, it's cool. Yeah. It's a cool one as well. It's a cool kind of hint that like, those he Griffin kind of says are like those Marines will follow you anywhere and do anything. I like the idea of like, because <laughs> that's just me. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm like hell yeah, man. I got me and my Spartan, me and my dudes, my Marines. Mm-hmm. Gonna, I like the idea that like a Spartan has like a group of Marines that just love her and will do stuff with her because they save. Cool. Yeah, Simps. she saved yeah. them. Right. I wasn't gonna say it, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and now retaliation. So we start this story arc on January 23rd, so a little ways after, about a month afterwards. And Griffin is deciding, you know, he's the, the lead. Again, there's multiple Spartan Spartans from various uh, fire teams, but these are kind of the remnants of who's left. And they're going to decide to draw straws. And one is going to stick around the reverie and defend the reverie, and then the other one is going to go and track down the Eshram and the banished plans. So um, the other Spartans kind of talk shit and like, we're really drawing straws for this. <laughs> um, and Griffin's like, yep, that's how we're going to do it. Here we go. Um, he says a single strike team deep in banished territory. And so that this is his plan. Um, then he they eventually get to the point where they realize that the banished know where they are and they um, need to um, eventually abandon the re- uh, the reverie, but um, most most of the story is is centered around Griffin and him um, being deep in territory and getting uh, getting captured. So Eshram finds him, and um, he he escapes a little bit, and then he's able to at least get one more. Um, 
one more comms out to his team that you will find in one of the next audio logs in this storyline. But he's more or less saying, uh, yep, we're, we're done for. We need to, uh, we need to get out of here. We need, just need to, to do anything we can to survive at this point. Yep. It's cool. <laughs> we fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, uh, Malik, Panago and Sarkar all gone. So everybody got, everybody got killed on his stra- straw drawn, uh, squad, which is sad, but you know what? That's, that's what's happened. That's why it's so barren here. When she that's the Spartan gets... life, man. Yeah, that's right. Okie dokes. So good stuff. Good background. Again, I would love some found footage, but yeah, the audio logs. All right. What else do we do on these episodes? <laughs> do, we, <laughs> do we do some uh, community questions? I think we do. We yeah, do. Yeah, sometimes we do that. Let's do those. Chris, do you want to start? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll start. All right. You need a pep talk. What does Master Chief tell you? Question for mission debrief? Halo Infinite? Pelican down mission. <laughs> So Joe Mama says, sir, you need to stop masturbating or you'll go blind. Chief, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt says, uh, don't worry, son. You'll never be as awful as Joe Mama. <laughs> so talking about the other guy. Nice. Uh, Toki says, uh, Chief pulls out a joint, rips it, passes it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see, time is just a construction of construction of minds, Toki. I literally went back in time while going through slip space. So when you think you've been gone from your family for this long, but like, could you go back? You know, uh, Toki says, how'd you hit this through your helmet? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dezudo says, uh, see, there's three kinds of people. Dicks, pussies, and assholes. Pussies think everyone can get along. Dicks just want to fuck all the time without thinking it through. But then you got your assholes, and all the assholes want to do is shit all over everything. So, pussies may get mad at the dicks once in a while because pussies get fucked by the dicks. But dicks also fuck assholes. <laughs> if they didn't fuck the assholes, you know what you'd get? You get your dick and pussy all covered in shit. So, what's perfect. that from? That's from something. It's from Team it America. It is from something. Yeah. T- is it yeah. Team America? Team yeah. America. It's very good. Shall Ronry. Uh, now they're talking about how cool I am and how I don't get embarrassed about it, but how David is a wimp for avoiding Discord, so. Yikes. Yeah, you're, you're they're getting, not wrong. people are talking shit about you all here, David. That's okay. I deserve it. <laughs> Discord scares me. <laughs> Jedi Spartan 38 says, I've been trained to do everything you do. I don't need you. I only keep you around so I can look more badass. That's great. I love that. That's very <laughs> motivating. Right. Uh, <laughs> Postman Pat just says, this is the wrong parcel. Return to sender. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I get paid to see dad says, son, it's time I gave you the talk. Mm. That's the motivation. That's scary. Yeah. So uh, that's about it. Thank you, Discord. You always provide an endless entertainment. Absolutely. David, what's Facebook have to say? El Facebooko. We have Mr. Colin Perkins, March 23rd at 6.34 p.m. That's so long ago. You need a pep talk. What does Matter Chief tell you? Question, mission, DB, Pelican, Pelican, down, mission, and a lovely picture, Colin. Well done. Well done, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And we got a good few answers today. So... Chris says, slurp it up, buttercup. <laughs> Justin, when she says, maybe we should see other people, trust me, she's already found one soldier. <laughs> Dave says, Montefuck, put your socks up, cop on, you big feckin' Egypt. I love it. That's some fine <laughs> Irish talk. Um, Alexander, pilot, I'm so sad and frustrated. With myself, Chief Pilot, you're right. It's my fault. I'm human. Let's get this bread. What's that from? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Luke Edwards says, you need a weapon. Lucas, 
He sits down and just starts rambling off 80s action movies, quote, things like, ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. I eat green berets for breakfast and right now I'm very hungry. <laughs> and you're a disease and I'm the cure. Love it. That's pretty good. Uh, Brad says, it may seem bad now, but at least you didn't hop on the back of a van marked only because they said they had candy. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, Dickie says, get good, scrub. Manny, need a boost? I have some octopo- I have some octopoda soda. Methane infused for that boost you're going to need against that grunt goblin. Jimmy, uh, chicken sandwiches are good. <laughs> Eat one now. Uh, Garrett says, even though the odds are stacked against us, we must prevail and make you the next person to be considered hyper lethal. Hmm. Clyde, sitting next to burning debris. You got this, man. You just need to remember to keep the marshmallow down in the midst of the embers with a slow rotation so you can get that even golden brown. You already know that you're using a Reese's peanut butter cup is far superior to just a chocolate bar. So all that's left is a hand-eye coordination necessary to pull your perfect marshmallow off the stick with the graham cracker and peanut butter cup without assistance. Come on, third time's a charm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Some kind of Reese's peanut butter thingy. I don't know. Some American yolk. <laughs> Alan says, finally, stares at me for an uncomfortable number of seconds, puts his massive armored hand on my shoulder, and says, there, there. <laughs> Thank you all, guys, very That's much. All, all he has to say. That's all he has to say. Very nice. Thank you, as always, for all of your answers. That will do it for our debriefing of this. Oh, not the Spire. I need, didn't update the. The notes. That was the Pelican Down mission from Halo Infinite. On the next episode, we'll be debriefing the fobs and outposts from the final open world area, Reformation. Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. You can also support the show by visiting Evolved on Patreon. For everything Evolved has to offer, visit evolvedhalo.com. Until next time, Evolve. Evolved. Evolved.